G, C, F, and L, C, M. These are next lesson, and what does it stand for? This stands for greatest common factor and lowest common multiple. A factor is a number that can go in or divide another number um, without getting a decimal. So we'll talk about these things, which are handy, especially when we get to the next unit, which is fractions. But before we get to these, let's talk about something which I'm sure you've heard of, prime numbers. Prime numbers are numbers that can only be divided by one and itself. So for example, the number one can only be divided by one and itself, which is, well, one. Two is prime, because two can only be divided by one and also itself, which is two. Three is prime. Four is not prime, because four can be divided by two, as well as one and itself, number four. Five is prime. Six is not prime, because six can be divided by two, and it can be divided by three. Um, the opposite of prime is composite, so these would be composite numbers. Seven is prime. Nine is not prime. Remember, nine can be divided by three. Um, and up and up you go, 15 here is not prime, 19 is the last one I've written down, but this list goes on forever. Um, the next prime number after 19, what do you think that would be? Well, it can't be 20, actually any even number after 2 cannot be prime because 2 can go into uh, any even number, so it's not 20. It's not 21 either, because 21 can be divided by 7 and 3. 22 is an even number, so that's not going to work, because 2 can go into it. 23 would be the next prime number here. Okay, let's not worry about that list. Let's we're pretty much only going to use these prime numbers here in the next little while. To do this, make what's called factor trees, and a factor tree is used to see what prime factors, or prime numbers, sorry, make up another number. Meaning what prime numbers go into or evenly divide another number. Let's take a look at the number six. Let's make a factor tree of six. By the way, some of you may have learned how to do this with another method called the hockey stick method. If you like that, go for it. Use that one. What numbers make up six? What numbers, when multiplied, give you six? Well, the ones that come to my mind would be six and one, yeah, or two and three. Now, two and three are prime fact, are prime numbers. There they are up there. So that's it. Two and three are factors, prime factors, of the number six. Okay, that's it. For number 8, the number 8, what two numbers make up 8? Well, you might think 4 times 2. So 4 and 2 go into 8. Now, 2 is a prime number, but 4 is not a prime number. You can further break up the number 4. What two other numbers make up number 4? 2 times 2. So here we have a different looking tree. And that's it. Once you've reached a prime number, you don't add more branches. Those are the prime factors of 8, 2, 2, the 2. And the prime factors of 6 are a 2 and a 3. How about these two? 16. Prime factors of 16. Um, well, first, what you could do is figure out what two numbers make up 16. You could do 8 times 2, or you could do 4 times 4. Either one, any one you like, you've got the same answer. Let's just go with 8 times 2. There's 8, and there's 2. 2 is prime, so we're done. We won't f factor this any further. 8. 8 can be made up of 4 times 2, which we saw above. 2 is prime, so we can stop factoring that. We're left with 4. This can be further factored to give you 2 and 2. So 16's prime factors are 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 which we actually knew when we did exponents, 2 to the power 4 or 16. The number 50, what numbers go into 50? Well, a few of them do. 
uh, 2 and 25, 5 and 10. Um, let's go with 5 and 10. 5 and 10. 5 already is a prime number, so we stop factoring it. 10 is made up of the factors 5 and 2, which are prime, so we stop there. The prime factors of 50 are 5, 5, and 2. Okay, so that's how you do um, factor trees. Now we can use this information to help us find the greatest common factor. It's like when you're given a pair of numbers, you're probably asked, what is the biggest number, what is the largest number or factor that can go into a pair of numbers? And here's a typical question. Find the greatest common factor of 6 and 4. What is the biggest number that can go into both 6 and 4? Two ways to do this. One is just common sense. What is the biggest number that can go into 6 and 4? Which means, which is the biggest number that can divide 6 and 4 evenly? Well, common sense tells you that the number 2 will do that, and it's true. The answer actually is 2. I'm going to show you how you do this with the factor tree if you can't, don't get the common sense method. So first what you do with, with the, each number is you factor it out. 6 is 2 times 3. Those are prime numbers, so you're done. 4 is made up of 2 times 2. Those are prime factors, so you're done. Okay. So those are factors. Well, we want to know what is the greatest common factor. What do they both have in common? What's well, like these two numbers are playing go fish. The six says I have a two. The four says well, so do I. So we can show that these two numbers are common. The six says I have a three. The four says I don't. And so these two numbers are not common. The biggest common factor they share is this two. So the GCF like I told you before, is 2. Whether you get that through common sense or by using the factor tree, you know, um, doesn't matter to me. Okay, what if you had a question like this? What is the greatest common factor of 8 and 10? So same thing, break up 8, which is made up of 4 and 2. And that 4 can be broken up to 2 and 2. So there are your factors of 8 prime factors of 8. 10 is made up of 5 times 2. And then we play our little go fish game. We see who, what, what number is common between these two. Well, it's pretty easy to see that they both have a 2 in common. 1, 2 in common. So the greatest common factor is 2. The 8 does not have a 5. And the 10 does not have any more 2, so that's your answer. And common sense tells you that is the biggest number that can go into 8 and 10. What about 18 and 24? What is the biggest number that goes into both 18 and 24? You can use your head or you can do the factor tree thing. 18. A whole bunch of things go into 18, like 6 and 3, 9 and 2. I'll go with 9 and 2. You can do 6 and 3 as well. You get the same answer. 2 is prime, so we'll stop. 9 is made up of 3 times 3. So those are the prime factors of 18. 24 is made up of a whole bunch of different things. Um, I'm going to do 6 times 4. 8 times 3 works. 12 times 2 works as well. 6 is made up of 2 and 3. They're prime, so you stop. 4 is made up of 2 and 2. They're prime, so you stop. All right, the 18 says I got a 2, 24 says I do as well. 18 says I got a 3, and 24 says I do as well. And that's where it ends, because the this 3, and there's 2 there, so there's nothing more in common. So what do you do now? You've got a 2 and a 3 that are common. Well, in this case, when you have more than one common factor, you multiply them. Six is the common factor. Two times three is six. And common sense tells you that six can go into both these numbers evenly. 
Okay, the opposite of greatest common factor is lowest common multiple. And that's the smallest number that a pair of numbers can go into. The LCM of 6 and 4. What is the smallest number that these two numbers can go into? Let's try this out. Common factor of 6 and 4. 2 and 3. Done. 6. Sorry, 4 is uh, 2 and 2. So you do what's common like before. They both share a 2. Now what you do next is different and a little bit goofy. To get the lowest common multiple, you take one of these common pairs, so a two, just one of them, multiplied by all the leftovers, three and two. 6 times 2 is 12. So 12 is the smallest number that both these numbers can go into. And that's, the, that's true. Lowest common multiple is uh, you use when you want to find the lowest common denominator. Like what would the lowest common denominator, sorry, denominator be between 6 and 4? It's 12. Either you common sense or you do this method to get that. Let's try this. Lowest common multiple of 8 and 12. Let's factor this out. 4 and 2. That breaks down to 2, 2, and 2. Uh, 4 times 3 will work, as would 6 times 2. That breaks down into this. Okay. 8 and 12 both share a 2. They also both share another 2. And that's it. That's common. So in the LCM, again, you write down one of each common pair, so only one of these twos here, and only one of these twos here, and then the leftovers, two times three. So when you do all this, you get two times two, which is eight, times two times three, eight times two, which is 16, times three, the answer is 48. No, it's not. Sorry, I made, <laughs> made a mistake. It's not the answer at all. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2, which is 8 times 3. The answer is 24. Even the mighty make mistakes. So that's the lowest number that both these numbers can go into. So that's LCM and GCF. Here are your skill testing questions. Get them done. You know the deal. Show me the notes with these questions done, and you can proceed to the work. Talk to you later. Bye.